Good evening, culture lovers. Oi, oi, we're back. Yes, welcome to Bushel on the Box, the show that does for bad telly what Chelsea just did to the Amers. What a week we've had. Sue Perkins is lost again, but sadly, some idiot always finds her. The BBC could justify the licence fee if they just took her to Thailand and left her there. The Tories are heading for absolute disaster. It's so bad, rebel MPs are now starting a campaign to replace Rishi before the general election with a crash test dummy. Let's just hope he pays his eulies. And we heard that Donald Trump gave Stormy Daniels £100,000 hush money. This has to be the first time in history anyone ever paid a porn star to keep her mouth shut. Stormy testified that she spanked Trump with a magazine with his own face on it. Surely if she'd wanted to hurt him, she'd have found one with Biden's face on it and then rolled it up, greased it up and used it as a suppository. How times have changed. In the innocent days of Victoria Wood, all a woman wanted was for her man to, not bleakly or meekly, beat her on the bottom with a woman's weekly. <laughs> Keeping things filthy. Can we talk about Baby Reindeer? This controversial saga of a struggling comedian and his obese stalker is a runaway smash for Netflix. Comedian Richard Gadd based it on his own true story. He plays Donnie Dunn, a hesitant, struggling prop comic and barman. As a stand-up, Donnie's piss poor, so you wouldn't have been surprised to see him pop up on Live at the Apollo being lavished with lashings of canned laughter. It's neatly written, fast-moving, and at first it's an easy watch. But you soon realise that his stalker, Martha Scott, is three stops short of Dagenham, I mean seriously barking, and his sex life rapidly descends into the stuff of Channel 4 reality documentaries via a series of sleazy one-night stands with women and men. Less open house, more shit house. He first meets Martha when he's working in the pub, not long, we learn, after he's been heavily drugged and anally raped by a predatory TV comedy writer and producer. So naturally he's traumatised and ridden with self-doubt. A baby reindeer indeed, caught in the headlights of life's speedy lorry. Dunn finally turns his miserable life around by abandoning his failing comedy routine on stage and instead spilling his guts about everything he's been through. Someone films it, it goes viral on YouTube and the loser becomes a winner. Horror author Stephen King calls that episode one of the best things he'd ever seen on TV or in the movies. Can't watch a lot, can he? In real life, Martha bombarded Donnie with endless suggestive text messages and even turned up where he lived. Something similar happened to me in the 90s with Pamela Anderson. But then I woke up. As their bizarre relationship failed, the phone calls, texts and voicemails become increasingly abusive. Martha targeted his parents and attacked his trans girlfriend. Although Gad tried hard to hide Scott and her real identity, she was quickly tracked down. The real Martha was also Scottish. She has a law degree and had stalked other people, although she denies a lot of his claims. After a Daily Mail journalist interviewed her, he alleged that she began stalking him. I'm probably one of the few viewers who were most annoyed by Martha's texts. Talk about illiterate. Who taught her to spell? Noddy Older and Slade? Donnie's stage meltdown never happened in Richard's real life, but he did talk about the sexual abuse and the stalking in his Edinburgh stage show, Monkey See, Monkey Do, reminding us that comedy has come a long way since Max Miller, mostly in the wrong direction. I woke up with a stalker in the 90s. Doesn't happen so often now. Why do the BBC persist with the cheesy hell of Eurovision? Yes, you could say to me, what about Sam Ryder gal? What about Lordy? And more convincingly, what about the Polish milkmaids of 2015? And I agree. But how much crap do you have to sit through to enjoy those few cherished moments? Eurovision is a celebration of bad Europop and thumping nightclub dance cliches. It's over long, over politicised and all over the BBC for no logical reason. It's the zenith of virtue signalling and the antidote to rock and roll. 
TV Maths. Rylan plus Tulisa equals Conchita Wurst. The anchor, Patsy Palmer, is back on EastEnders. I haven't watched her. I heard her. I only live 10 miles away. The Responder was one of the great thrillers of 2022, written by ex-cop turned taxi driver Tony Schumacher. It stars Martin Freeman as Chris Carson, a Liverpool cop at the end of his tether. Carson is a car crash of a human being and an angry arsehole with a chip on his shoulder, and that's according to a fellow cop. You can't blame him. He's lost his wife, magnificent Mayanna Burring, to an AC-12 style copper who bust him down the ranks. He's forced to deal with the drug dealing scum of the earth and do favours for bent cops. The drama, dialogue and dark humour feel utterly authentic. Series 1 was nominated for six BAFTAs last year and didn't win a single thing. But all that proves is that BAFTA is more out of touch than Edward Cizan's. Chris was nicking in Series 1 to pay for his mum's care home. Now she's gone, he's reunited with the father who left them and stealing from him to pay for his daughter's communion dress. Luckily for us, his dad is played by the great, but now sadly late, Bernard Hill, who was violently abusive to Chris as a kid. Now he can't wipe his own ass, but he's still unnerving. Chris needs to get transferred out of response to a day job so he can spend more time with his daughter. So he's pressured into taking risks by his bent old boss who wants him to fit up a drug dealer. Even Chubby Brown might think they swear a bit too much, but it sounds utterly authentic to me. The show is a fitting farewell role for Bernard Hill, who sparkled in Titanic and Lord of the Rings, but will always be remembered for Alan Bleasdale's 1982 drama Boys from the Black Stuff and his brilliant portrayal of jobless scouse tarmac layer Yossa Hughes, the head Bart, the desperate Dan line, and of course, guess a job? I could do that. People had a work ethic back then. Today's Yossa is probably saying, Guess a sick note, I can't do that. We've talked a lot recently about male detectives, so here's a quick subjective and probably sexist list of the top three hottest female British TV detectives. Sorry Vera. At number one, Jane Tennyson in Prime Suspect, played by the great Helen Mirren. Emma Naomi as D.I. Lisa Donkers in Professor T. I'm bonkers for donkers and Imogen Stubbs as Anna Lee. Now that show wasn't much cop, but she was hot, and I always wished ITV could have been more Anna Lee retentive. For great British female detectives, see Catherine Kaywood, Joan Hickson's Miss Marple, Vera Stanhope, and of course Jane Tennyson, who qualifies in both categories. Denmark Sarah Lund is in a list all of her own. Are you still watching Red Eye? There are so many crazy twists on the ITV airplane drama, viewers are advised to adopt the brace position. Time for some mysteries. When Russ Abbott Scotsman went on holiday, did he insist on a sea view, Jimmy? If someone opened a strip club called the G-Spot, would blokes have trouble finding it? And why, oh why, are TV travel shows fronted by comedians, reality books and actors, and not adventurers, historians, wits and explorers? Alan Wicker was the greatest of them all. Just Stop Oil must have hated him though. He clocked up more airmails than Buzz Aldrin. Just time for this lookalike sent in by viewer Batty. It's me and this cat. Perfect. Poor cats. Didn't they suffer enough looking like Hitler? Oi, oi, that's your lot. I'll be back soon. Cheerio. Cheerio.